Any recorded medium, be it video or sound, has a tremendous advantage and a serious drawback, and ironically, they're both the same. In a concert hall, the singer has only one chance to hit that top note. If he blows it, that's it. In the recording studio, the possibility exists to go on for that top note ad infinitum and often ad nausea. As in so many things, possibility commands necessity. Let's just give it one more take. The road to insanity is paved with the millstones of perfectionism. Worse, however, perfectionism very often leads to mediocrity. A well-known record producer used to quip in the studio, let's improve it till it's dreadful. He told me that whenever he finished the record, there were parts with which he was less than satisfied. Maybe a certain instrument could have been louder or softer or a piece of the vocal wasn't quite smooth enough. Ironically, if the record became a hit, often those parts were the parts that made the record original and unique. Why? One of the prerequisites of being a good artist is knowing how to get out of your own way. All creation begins with imitation. But if art never escapes imitation, it's doomed to blandness. It will never be more than a recapitulation of what's preceded it. Great art has the ability to lead you down the path of the familiar and then reveal something you never dreamed. The greatest artist who ever lived was called Betzalel. But Salel built the Mishkan, the temple in the desert, after the Jewish people left Egypt. The greatness of Betzalel's creation was that he succeeded in doing what every artist dreams of doing, to make heaven dwell on earth, to make the spiritual dwell within the physical. The Mishkan was the way in which the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, became apparent in this world. There's a mystical concept that God created the universe using the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. But Salel knew how to take those letters, those building blocks of creation, and with mystical kavanot, we probably call that directed thoughts in English, he would combine them to create God's dwelling place on earth, similar to the way that God himself created the whole universe with those same letters. But Salel's name means in the shadow of God, but sail Kale. The greatest artist is someone who can get out of his own way and allow God to paint the picture. He makes himself a shadow of something infinitely greater. It says in this week's Torah portion, May God extend the Yafet, but he will dwell in the tents of Shem. Noah, Noah, Noah's son, Yafet, was the father of Yavan, the founder of ancient Greece. The Jewish people are descended from Shem. Greece and all its gifts to the world, aesthetics, poetics, drama, that is, the depiction of the world as it looks from the outside in, finds its true purpose when Yafet dwells in the tents of Shem, when art dwells in the tents of Torah. It is the Torah that gives us a view of the world from the inside out. The greatest art comes when the artist recognizes that he is merely a tool in the hands of the artist, of Hashem. <laughs>